Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my August wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about all the books that I've read in the month of August. So I read 13 books in the month of August um, and I actually read some really fantastic things this month. It was a really good reading month. So I will get straight in and I will start off as always with the classics. I read two Victorian things this month. One was this. This is George Silverman's Explanation, which is a little collection of three short stories by Dickens. Um, the three stories being George Silverman's Explanation, Hunted Down and Holiday Romance. I really enjoyed all of these. Charles Dickens is my favourite author and I love the way he writes. Um, and I've read all of his longer fiction, um, but I haven't actually read that much of his short fiction. I've read some but I'm kind of working my way slowly through and I really enjoyed these three stories. I think I especially enjoyed Holiday Romance which is this strange little story in four parts which is like four children and the like conceit within the story is that it's by children so the idea is that each um, of the four like short stories within this short story and is by a different child within the same friendship group um, but they're not like writing about themselves as children necessarily they're writing about like their imaginative worlds um, and it's quite odd but it's really fun so I really enjoyed this and this was a really good fun read and then the other Victorian thing that I read in August was this this is The Mystery of Clumber by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle so this is one of Arthur Conan Doyle's non-Sherlock Holmes mysteries and um, I have read all of the Sherlock Holmes stuff and I have been meaning to read some more of his mysteries that aren't about Sherlock Holmes for a while um, and this has been on my list for ages and I finally got to it this month. This is a book from 1888 and it's told from the perspective of a young man living in Scotland um, who is kind of like witnessing strange events going on in a big house nearby. Um, so a man who is a general and his family move into this big house at Clumber um, and the general is clearly very afraid of something in his past um, and he's very very nervous and anxious um, and there's obviously some kind of mystery in his past and our main character wants to know what it is and everything kind of goes on from there. I have kind of mixed feelings about this. I feel like as a mystery it wasn't the best mystery. Like if I compare it to other Victorian sensation novels or um, Wilkie Collins or the Sherlock Holmes stories, I feel like it wasn't the most gripping or exciting mystery. And also it is very much one of those Victorian books that hasn't aged well. Um, it becomes clear like very early on the narrative that what the general is afraid of in his past is something to do with his past as a soldier in India and Afghanistan. And it's complicated because I feel like within this novel, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is trying to criticize imperialism and colonialism. Like there is a critique present within this book, but it is one very much within the limited scope of the time and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's views. So it is still a bit like uncomfortable to read as a modern reader. So not necessarily the best Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I would recommend The Hand of the Baskervilles or the first collection of Sherlock Holmes stories more. Um, but you know, I'm glad that I finally read it because I haven't been to read it for a while. Then I also read three early 20th century classics this month, one of which was Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. Um, I must have read some of these stories before in my childhood, but um, not that I remember. I listened to this on audiobook. Audible had a collection included in their membership um, of some stories about Winnie the Pooh, and I really enjoyed these. Um, this is a collection from 1926, I think. These were quite fun to read. It was kind of like one of those surreal reading experiences because I feel like I know these characters really well from like popular culture and my own childhood but I don't actually remember the original stories and um, so it's really nice to read some of these stories and they were quite fun. I also really like the conceit set up within the Winnie the Pooh stories where like the narrator is Christopher Robin's dad basically um, telling Christopher Robin stories about his toys and then every now and then there'll be like conversations between Christopher Robin and his father where um Christopher Robin would be like and then what did I do next um, and I just think that was quite fun and um, so I really enjoyed that I will say that the version I listened to on audiobook was like very heavily acted and there was lots of like sound effects um and like piglet snorts every time he talks um which was quite fun to listen to um, but I often listen to audiobooks while going to sleep and it wasn't a great audiobook to go to sleep to um but it was still a really good fun listen but one thing I will say is though that over the last like year or two having listened to both Winnie the Pooh and Paddington Bear stories as an adult Paddington Bear is like so much better than Winnie the Pooh sorry if the lighting has just very dramatically changed it was very much getting dark around me and I need to go and get an extra lamp but anyway the next early 20th century classic I read in August was Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie. This is one of her standalone mysteries and I really enjoyed it. So at the beginning of the novel, um, our main character Bobby Jones is playing golf when he hears something strange and he goes to the edge of the cliff and finds that a man has fallen off the edge of the cliff. Although of course, 
it being Agatha Christie, he hasn't, he probably hasn't fallen, has he? Bobby goes down to find this man to see if he is still alive. And, and the man says to him, why didn't they ask Evans? Um, and those are his last words and then he dies. Um, and then the rest of the novel is Bobby trying to like find out what happened and why he might have said those weird words. And he ends up teaming up with um, Lady Frances, his wealthy neighbor. Um, and they go on like a bit of a mission together um, to try and track down what actually happened. I just really enjoyed why didn't they ask Evans. It was really good fun a really enjoyable thoroughly like excellent Agatha Christie um in a really great way and I really like the dynamic between Bobby Jones and Lady Frances um I feel like if anyone has read the Tommy and Tuppence books and um, the dynamic between Frances and Bobby were quite similar and I really liked Lady Frances as a character I thought she was great one of the things I always enjoy about Agatha Christie actually is how there are so many female characters in her books who are just like really capable and really clever and get annoyed when people underestimate them because I just feel like that's quite nice um but yeah I really enjoyed Why Didn't They Ask Evans definitely an Agatha Christie I'd recommend then another thing I read this month was Lady Rose and Mrs Memory by Ruby Ferguson this is a classic from 1937 and this is what of the Persephone classics and I really really enjoyed this one too this was a real favorite this month this was a lovely read um so this is a kind of like dual narrative between um the 1930s and like the late Victorian period we start off with um a couple and one of their friends going around this big country house in Scotland um like kind of as visitors sort of as you might go around a stately home I suppose um, and the housekeeper there Mrs Memory starts to tell them about um Lady Rose the little girl who used to live there many many years ago and we end up kind of going through the whole of Lady Rose's life and it's just a really great book and um, kind of lovely and charming but also with like a lot of really kind of key and interesting things to say about the position of women in 19th century society. The writing was lovely, it was so readable and compelling and I really really enjoyed it. I did guess like one plot point like quite a way before I think I was supposed to um, but I kind of didn't mind that because I just like enjoyed waiting for it to be revealed um, and I just really really liked it so I'd highly recommend this one. Really good Persephone classic and just a joy to read. Then I also read a modern classic from Kenya this month, A Grain of Wheat by Gogi Wathyongo. This is a book from 1967 that I've been meaning to read for a while um, and one that I found really really interesting. It's set in 1963 shortly before Kenya got independence and it's basically about this um kind of time of great change within Kenyan society and about various characters um, from one village and what happens when several of the men kind of return to this village after a long time away. So it's very much about the kind of politics of the time as well as about the relationships between these characters. And I thought this was a really, really good book. I feel like the politics in this book was absolutely fascinating, but the character relationships were really well done and the characterization was fantastic. I feel like the themes of identity and culture and betrayal and change and how kind of the big political events of the time are affecting both men and women in quite different ways um, I feel like all that was done really really well. My favourite character was definitely Mumbi who was the wife of one of the main characters and I thought she was really fantastically drawn and I feel like the ending of the novel um, which has some stuff to do with her was just really really good um, but in general I really really like this. I feel like it was such an interesting novel in terms of like the characterization and the intricacies of the character relationship. I do feel like there are some things in this book which I would have understood more if I had a bit more of the kind of historical context which I don't have um but I do think that this is a novel that you can read like without the historical context because it is really about the character relationships and the kind of how the characters are reacting to their time I suppose more than like the events themselves and um, so I do think it's still a very accessible read and one I really really recommend I thought it was really fantastic and I also read a Brazilian classic in August this is Out of the Star by Clarice Lispector and this is a novel from 1977 and one that I really enjoyed this was translated from the Portuguese by Benjamin Moser um, and this was a really great read it was very strange and very different and very very like lyrical and meandering but in a kind of wonderful way. This novel is basically a character study of um, this young woman who's living in Rio working as a typist and her life is very dull um, and kind of empty but also she's not that unhappy with it because she kind of just thinks that's how things are um, and it's sort of just about her life but it's being told from the perspective of a writer who is sort of inventing her but also sort of like describing her um, like she's a real person and is kind of fiddly and strange but I sort of liked that and the writing style is very unusual um, and very kind of literary and experimental I guess but I really liked it I feel like it worked really well and it was very very beautifully written it kind of reminded me in writing style actually of Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin which I read a couple of months ago that I think it's more literary and I think it's like more 
experimental writing, but there was something about like the lyricism and the beauty of the writing and the images and the symbolism that I, I think reminded me a bit of Giovanni's room. I really liked this. I feel like it's the kind of writing style that I wouldn't always get on with, but something about the story that was being told um, and the way it was being told worked really well. Um, and it is very short too. So I feel like that, that helps with the more difficult writing style. So I'd really, really recommend this. It was a great read. And yeah, I'd be interested to read something else by Clara Suspector in the future as well. Moving forward through time, I also read a book from the 90s this month, which was a Terry Pratchett book. I read Weird Sisters by Terry Pratchett, which I listened to on audiobook. I say I read it this month. I've actually been listening to it on audiobook for quite a while. Me and my husband Nick have been listening to it together. And it sometimes takes us a while to get through books when we're listening to them together. This is the third Terry Pratchett book I've read um, and definitely my favourite so far. And we listened to one of the new Terry Pratchett audiobooks that Penguin has started putting out recently, which are really, really well done. Like, I feel like the narrative style um, and the way the narrator does it just like gets the humour so well. Weird Sisters is one of Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels set in a, you know, alternate world, a fantasy world. And this novel begins with the assassination of a king um, by a duke who wants to take over the throne. Um, and then three witches end up kind of taking the heir to the throne and the king's son to safety um, out of the way of the duke. And everything kind of goes on from there. So it's both kind of like a light fantasy, comedic fantasy novel, but it's also got like, so so many Shakespeare references in. It's filled with Macbeth references and there's also quite a lot of Hamlet references too in a really fun way and um, so I really enjoyed Weird Sisters. It was good fun. I do think it was possibly a little bit long. Like I really like Terry Pratchett and I really enjoy his sense of humour but I feel like that sense of humour is quite hard to sustain for quite a long book um, so I did feel like it dragged a little bit at the end but I did still really really enjoy it um, and that might have just been because I listened to it over quite a long period of time so yeah I really enjoyed that one and can't wait to read on with the Discworld novels talking of fantasy in August I also listened to The Final Strife by Sarah El Arifi which was absolutely fantastic this was one of my favourite books of the year so far um, and possibly my new favourite fantasy novel I feel like I'm going to say that. It was so good. So this is high fantasy, set in another world, magic systems, all of that stuff. And it was just, it was just so good. It was just amazing. So it's set in this world called the Warden's Empire. There are four wardens who rule over everything. And there are three kind of social groups within this world who are defined by the colour of their blood. And um, so there are embers who are at the top who have red blood. There are dusters who are kind of in the middle who have blue blood. And then there are the ghostings who are at the bottom of society um, and they have clear blood. Basically the society is very stratified, very prejudiced and very unfair. And many years ago as an act of rebellion, um, the dusters who are kind of the middle people swapped some children with ember children to like make them into weapons against the empire basically and we're following two young women Sila and Honora who are two of the people who were swapped when they were babies so one of them is an ember who's been brought up as a duster and one of them is a duster who's been brought up as an ember and through various circumstances they end up coming together and everything kind of goes on from there it sounds like a complicated premise but it's really not I feel like it's really hard to explain what's so good about this book because basically it was everything the characterization is impeccable and the character development was so good like Anora's character development over the course of the book was fantastic and Sila too Sila is also a recovering drug addict and that's like a really important theme in the book and I feel like that was done so well. Her struggles with getting over addiction and also like the health problems getting over addiction gives her and um, I feel like was just just really really well done and I just feel like I never see that in books and I was really impressed by that. I feel like all the other themes the novel explored were so good. The way the book looks at grief and trauma all the kind of like social themes to do with prejudice and, and kind of class and social stratification and race and all of that stuff was done so well. Like the politics of this world was fantastic but also this world has this thing called the time wind where like at night time um, the wind is so fierce that everyone like has to be inside and I feel like the way the tide wind is changing and how that like was almost like talking about global warming like it was so good and the love story was like absolutely amazing and so good and the writing was incredible and I just really 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 loved everything about it. I also really liked the fact that the two central characters were women because I feel like a lot of the fantasy I've read before had been quite male dominated and certainly like my favourite my other favourite fantasy book, The Name of the Wind. Like, I love it, but also I get really annoyed with Patrick Rothfuss's representation of women sometimes. And I feel like reading a fantasy novel where, like, um, equality based on gender and sexuality was not an issue, it was all the other bits of inequality that were the problem. Like, I feel like that was just quite nice. Um, and I just, yeah, I just loved it so much. I think it was so good. If you read any fantasy book in the next, like, year or two, make it The Final Strife. It was so amazing. I can't wait for the next book in the series. And it really reminded me, actually, how much I love fantasy and the I really should read more fantasy because yeah it was just so 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 very very good. 
From fantasy to sort of science fiction, this month I also read Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, which was another favourite book of the month and of the year. Emily St. John Mandel is one of my absolute favourite authors and this book was magnificent and incredible. This book has a really interesting setup and structure where it kind of starts off historical and then goes into futuristic and science fiction. So we start off the book in 1912, then we go to 2020, then we go to 2203, then we go to 2401, then we go back to 2203, and then we go back in time again and we just kind of like move forward and back in time um, and the way this book looks at like different points in history and um, the way that all of these time periods link together and the thread that runs through this narrative oh, it was just so good the characterization was amazing and um, the themes that it explores especially to do with like um the end of the world, I guess. It was, was so good. There's quite a lot in this novel about um, pandemics. The 2203 um, section is set during a pandemic, um, a kind of interstellar pandemic between Earth and the Moon. Um, and I feel like the way that Emily St. John Mandel used this book to write about the last few years was just amazing and fantastic. I did find it like very, very hard hitting. Like there were a few moments reading this book where like I just started crying, um, but it was so good and so powerful and her characterization is impeccable and her writing is so precise and clean and beautiful. And I just, I just love her absolutely as an author. This book is incredible. And you know what else this book is? It's just really, really cool. Like I feel like when I read Emily St. John Mandel, I'm always like, oh, that's just such an awesome idea. Like what a cool thing to write about. I just love it. One thing I will say is that this isn't necessarily a good place to start with Emily St. John Mandel because it does have some spoilers in it for The Glass Hotel and a few characters from The Glass Hotel appear in Sea of Tranquility. So I would read The Glass Hotel before you read this. And I also feel like you will get more out of this book if you've read Station Eleven because Station Eleven is a book from a while ago that Emily St. John Mandel wrote, which is about a pandemic, and it was written before COVID. But it's about a pandemic that wipes out a lot of people. Um, and the section of this book, which is set in a pandemic, is about an author who has written a book about a pandemic and what it's like being an author who's written a book about a pandemic during a pandemic. And I feel like there's so many references in it to Station Eleven. And there's so much in it that must be quite personal to Emily St. John Mandel about how it felt to be a writer who had written a book about a pandemic a few years before a very big pandemic. Um, so I feel like you just won't get as much out of this unless you have read Station Eleven, but oh, it was so good though. It was so, so, so amazing. Highly, highly recommend it. Then another book by one of my favourite authors, I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which was a really, really amazing book. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid a lot. This is the third book I've read by her and it was fantastic. So this tells the story of the Reaver family, um, four siblings who have grown up together. Their father, Mick Reaver, was a very famous singer who was not around very much in their childhood, basically left their mother. They haven't seen him for a very long time. They haven't seen him since their mother's death several years ago. Um, and Nina, the elder sibling, has basically taken over Kind of being the mother of the family but because they are the children of a very famous singer they have also kind of become famous in their own right nina is a model and a surfer um, and some of the other younger children also have kind of careers to do with surfing and photography and the book is chiefly set over one day um when they're having like a big annual party and you know at the beginning that something very dramatic is going to happen at this party so in the first part of the book and um, every other chapter is the Riva family getting ready for this party um, and then in between those chapters we had a flashback to their child childhood um, and find out the story of their parents and of them growing up and then in the second half of the book um, again half of it every other chapter is following the Reva family at the party um, and then between that there's lots of chapters which are just like little vignettes following other guests at the party. I feel like one of the things I really loved about this book was the structure and those little vignettes in the second half where you just get like a glimpse into all these different people at this party and all their different lives like I feel like that was done so well. Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of those authors where I feel like she just really really gets people like I feel like her characterization is so immaculate and so like real um, and that's just one of the things I really love about her books. I also found this book like incredibly moving. I feel like the family dynamics and the way this very complicated messy family um, is drawn was so good and the way the four siblings kind of stick together um, without their parents is, is so well done. I think the best way to explain like how moving and emotional this book is is that like I have absolutely no interest in surfing. I feel like surfing seems very boring to me but there's one scene where like the family goes surfing together and I was like in floods of tears by the end because it 
was like so beautiful and so like well drawn like what this meant to them was like so clear on the page and it was just great so highly highly recommend the Malibu Rising it was excellent then I also read a short story collection this month which was A Things Remembered and Things Forgotten by Kyoko Nakajima this collection of short stories was translated from the Japanese by Ian McLaughlin McDonald and Ginny Taplay Takamori um, and I really enjoyed all of these stories and I really like the way these stories look at themes of identity and memory um, I feel like my favourite story was probably um, When My Wife Was a Shiitake um, which is a short story about basically about a man falling in love with his wife after his wife's death when they've always had a fairly like distance marriage I suppose where they didn't really know each other and then after her death he starts reading her cookery books um, and slowly begins to like fall in love with her because he understands her so much more than he ever did while she was alive and I just feel like that was done really really nicely and was very well written so I highly highly recommend Things Remembered and Things Forgotten it was a really good short story collection and then the final thing that I read in the month of August was a non-fiction book and that was this this is The Secret Sisterhood by um, Emily Midori Kawa and Emma Claire Sweeney so I started reading this back in Jane Austen July because the first section in this book is about Jane Austen and then I read the other three sections in August. So this book is basically about literary friendships between women um, and it's split into four sections talking about four different literary friendships over history. So Jane Austen and Anne Sharp is the first section. The second is Charlotte Bronte and Mary Taylor. Then George Eliot and Harriet Beecher Stowe. And then Catherine Mansfield and Virginia Woolf. I really enjoyed this. I feel like this was a really, really interesting read and I really liked the kind of exploration of the lives of these women and the kind of literary friendships between them. It's just really interesting to read about these literary friendships. So I really enjoyed this too. It was a good read. And that is all. Um, I think I've been filming for ages, so I'm sorry if this has been an extra long wrap up, but I read some really fantastic books in August, especially The Final Strife and um, Sea of Tranquility and Malibu Rising, all of which were amazing. Although actually Lady Rose and Mrs. Memory was great too. Um, and so was George Silverman's explanation. So it's just been a pretty good reading month in all. So that's that's all for now. Do let me know down in the comments um, if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.